first race lining up just a short course three laps two portages each lap of about 1200 meters some very big names in this one Bernard Che and he's just backing on last one on top of your picture Vander Kisley second last oh didn't even put it back on the plan away we go four closest to us all from Spain Irati Osa um, Brindal, Toledo and Alvarez all the way well just above them is Kisley and just behind her Renata Che and outside Renata Che towards the top of your picture is going to be Maria Lopez also from Spain but for now it's the four Spaniards and Kisley Vanda Kisley that won the, the short track in uh, Siged in the Sprint World Cup uh, last uh, weekend uh, before Lizzie Broughton from Great Britain two other Hung Hungarians in here as well Sofia Gixi and Eniko Vaxai yet to show and as you can see from the pictures Portugal's not coming good with the weather visibility's poor so for us to see numbers from inside our commentary booth it's going to be very very difficult today they make their way upstream to the first turn and we're left with a picture of the bleak Portuguese weather yeah, it's raining very heavily um, but uh, the water is quite cold we saw that it was some waves from boats uh, at the start. Uh, they had some trouble there. Otherwise, it's uh, flat water and no, no stream, as it seems. So surprised to see the Spaniards taking it to them there, Stefan? Yes. And we're, mi we're missing Arquero, one of the best Spaniards, off this list and off tomorrow's list as well. So there are four races. Alvarez, we've seen before, the other three. Osa, Brindo and Toledo are not familiar names to me. So we could be in for a weekend of good racing because obviously being located where we are, a lot of Spaniards and a lot of Portuguese at this event. <coughs> and very, very good uh, Hungarians in this race. Renata Shea, uh, who have won most of the races uh, for two decades or so. And uh, also Vanda uh, Kisli, who is... Uh, the uh, new Queen of Marathon winning last year's world championship and oh also yeah, I'm going to take, gonna take yeah. issue with that Stefan Lani Belcher won the world championships ah, last that's year. right absolutely yeah. she was but she beat uh, she beat uh, um, Renata so, and then Eniko Vace uh, that also is, is a very very good Hungarian so front group now Kisli with two Spaniards On the back. I'm not sure who's fourth in that group. Could be Hungarian, judging by the shirt. But uh, nice view of a flag there. And Kisley just taking over the lead. For what seems to be the first time. So Hungary, Spain, Spain. Spain again and Hungary at the back of that group. So coming in for the first portage. They are doing tr three laps on this short track. 3.4 kilometers in total. 3.6 actually. Last weekend it was five kilometers with, with portage in Seged. And we saw um, the Hungarians also there. Renate Che didn't finish, but Van der Kisli won the race. Now it's even shorter, but it's more portages. Portage is a beach portage. They're just coming into it now. Reasonably stony, quite soft sand. Tide's high at the moment, though, so the portage is pretty much as short as it can be. 
later on in the weekend some of the races will be at low tide which will probably add a, a good 50 60 meters to this portage so boat 34 there tanya alvarez she's the one we've seen before and she's certainly taking it to kisley coming in for portage number one Alvarez fourth in the under 23 world championships last year and I think fifth in the sprints at the Europeans last year also in Portugal but stepped it up so it's Alvarez from Kisley Toledo Osa Che and sixth place Jenna Ward who we haven't mentioned yet Backside and Riosa from Estonia at the back there. On eighth. So far there's 12. The starters listed for this race. Away goes Alvarez. Away goes Kisley. A little bit tentative. Toledo latched on to Kisley. Should get a ride back to the front of this. Che just a few lengths down. With Jenna Ward to her right. So there in the black shirt. Hopefully by the end of the weekend we'll adjust the camera angle so we can see down to the entrance of the portage there, or the exit rather. So first six from this race will go through to a final. And there's two heats, so that's 12 in the final already. And the rest of that 20 for the final is made up of the eight best times. And there's a view of, uh, <coughs> it's not really a tourist shot, is it, that one? It's not, that doesn't say come to Portugal, does it? That's it. They go up for their second of three top turns. Race was looking fairly well organized. Alvarez taking it to them. Then it was Kisley, and she was given a ride back up to second Spaniard. And then Renato Che, fourth, away from the portage. So the short races are relatively new to the program, Stefan. I mean, what, what, what are we thinking it adds to to the weekend? I think uh, when we uh, implemented it uh, three years ago, uh, it was to uh, encourage uh, sprint paddlers as well to to do marathons and also encourage people to to uh, practice portages and develop their skills uh, across the course. And I think it's, it has been a success, actually. It's very popular among the athletes, and uh, now also sprint racing has pick, picking, it, picking it up. It's interesting, Stefan. Uh, you say that at the 5K at the sprints last week, the Hungarians opted to put a portage in. And although the coverage wasn't great for, for all that, the one thing that stuck out on the internet this week is the incident just before the first portage in the women's race. So it's the, it's the one thing that's caught people's attention from that whole weekend is the 5K with the portage. Absolutely, it creates some uh, some more action to it. And um, sports nowadays is is to the extreme. It should be very very fast, a lot of action, or very very endurant and more or less crazy. And um, I think uh, these races are are catching up on that. So Kisley. Malvarez, Renato Che making a good effort to close that gap now. It they does are look safe. Like it's closing. They are safe. I think they can relax and save strength for tomorrow and Sunday because Sunday it's the long races. The six through, yeah, that's a very good point, Stefan. I mean, they're working quite hard considering yeah. they're six through and only four in the shot. Che's closed that gap. 
quite comfortably. So Kisley, Alvarez, Jay. It's of course all, always some prestige among these girls and they want to, the, as, the fir, as it is the first race of uh, of uh, the year, they want to show some strengths as well. So it's not only about uh, getting a position for the final. Really impressed by Alvarez there. She looks comfortable. Yeah, very. Just coming into the portage now. You can see the beach there. It's reasonably steep up to the grass at the top. They run along the grass. They're getting out the boats. Both tidy. Alvarez just lost the boat a little bit there out to the right. Little gap still. Renata Che emptying her boat. I think she's accepted that with six through, this isn't going to be a problem for her. And it's Toledo, fourth person in that group. down the portage there fifth place so these are the top six 31 is Irati Osa from Spain Jenna Wall latching on to Che that's a nice little ride up to the next group so 41 and 32 is Lopez and Brindo from Spain not in the top six, so they are going to have to hurry. But the thing is that um, it's uh, timing uh, for the for the next date, so yeah. they should go as hard as they can. Never give up, give up. Eighth place there, backside from Hungary. Yeah. You wouldn't have predicted that. Based no. Purely on the fact that she's from Hungary, to be fair, I don't know. I don't know if I'm she have done some past. marathons and some good ones over the years. Used to be among uh, the girls that are fighting for for the medals. That's uh, Marie Mix from Germany at the back. I mean, last year, still a junior, ninth in the Junior World Championships and quite a long way off the pace so not real surprised to see her fighting it a bit today and I think she's racing in the long race tomorrow as well and, uh, it's going to be a tough weekend for Maria <coughs> so there's Maria and she is catching up a very grumpy looking Sophia Gixi there too cheerful Maria not really taking care of her rudder getting in either wonder if they have understood that it is timing <laughs> for for the next coming eight positions after or, the six or maybe they've just seen that that slipped away now already and maybe it's not for them so quick recap of the course to start just to our right first lap about 600 meters up to the top 600 meters back and out of the portage one lap, second lap, exactly the same. And where we're going up, it's the yellow line now. They're on their final turn, and they will come straight into the finish, which is pretty much directly in front of us and at the exit of the portage. The pouring rain has uh, stopped a little bit. Not that you'd know it from the assembled crowd on the uh, pontoon there. Stocks in sun cream are low this weekend. So 
So we can see people headed back towards the finish. Two boats sort of right at the top of your screen there at the top turn. And here we come into the finish. It's Kisley and Alvarez. They're going to be across the line, comfortably qualified for the finals. So one, two, Kisley, Alvarez, no real stress. Kisley, who won uh, in Sega as well, and have done uh, many good races already this year in South Africa and other continents. Uh, she's a marathon professional and um, uh, still quite young. So Che, Toledo and Ward, that's three, four and five. Jenna Ward is also the South African, is also a coming girl, still young, having done many good results on Nina the marathon Riosa courses already. In the last guaranteed place from this race and then it's all down to time for the next few finishes. So there's eight of the fastest finishers will qualify. Kisley not troubled at all. Thirty-one there. Irati Osa in shot and just behind her was one of the Hungarians. tail enders come in the contenders for the next race are going out next race we've got a good mix of nationalities Spain Great Britain Czech Republic Australia Italy Sweden France Hungary and Portugal all in the next one first one was mainly a Hungary versus Spain battle with a South African German and Estonian chucked in but the next one much more international affair so two heats of women followed by two heats of men C1s a couple of scratches at the team leaders meeting meant that that's now a straight final and that will be on tomorrow morning, relatively early. About 10.45 tomorrow morning is when we start racing. And that's with the junior finals of this short track event. on screen there, multiple world medalist, one of the stars of the discipline at the moment, obviously a busy man, taking phone calls even when he's at canoe events, we'll assume that's a press call, sponsors phoning him, make sure he's publicising him well. It's still 20 minutes to start for him, so...
Just a few minutes to go to the start of the second heat of the women's short race. In this one, we've got Spain, Great Britain, Czech Republic, Australia, Italy, Sweden, France, Hungary, Portugal. Rain's slowed down slightly, the wind's dropped slightly, but you can see from the shots you're getting that sunshine is not in big supply here in Portugal. So we got some good, good races in this one. Stand out in this one, number 51, Sofia Celivoros. So Celivoros, second in the under 23 World Championships last year and second at the European Championships. Also, just turning in front of the other girls who are lined up there. Jenny Withers, just about to back in. Looks like she's not sure there's enough room for her. That's the trouble with these start lines. They do line you up very close together. It's a little bit of an experience and not necessarily a positive one when you're lined up that close to people. It's always a little bit tense. 46, just poking out the front there. Isabel Nielsen from Australia, closest to us. Tanya Fernandez from Spain. Second up, Maya Wallace from Richmond Canoe Club. She stood in for Alex Lane, medalist at the under 23 Worlds last year. Nicely away at the start. And it certainly seems from the two heats we've seen that the near side of the landing stage 
gets a better start than the far side. And that's to do with the way the river works here. There's a big back eddy, 51. Top of your picture there, Chelai Borosh, the athlete of class. Maya Wallace doing a great job just to hang in there at the moment. But certainly those on the left side of the landing stage have a big advantage. A little bit of a coming together there between the Czech and somebody else who I can't identify quickly enough to tell you. That's Lenka Hrachova from Czech Republic. Maya Wallace just lost touch with those front two. Jenny Withers on the outside of the group there. And the Australian Nielsen also in the running. But that's going to come into play even more when the uh, fields are stretched over the whole land at stage later on in the weekend. There's a, a big flow going down the middle of this river. The river flows towards us as we are looking at the screen now out to sea just a couple of k to our right and the flow there means that people on their gps's while they're out training depends actually on the on, on the, the tide, tide obviously but uh, both races have split quite dramatically from the left to the right of that pontoon yesterday um, when they were training it was uh, two kilometers upwards and six kilometers uh, downstream, the same distance, yeah, uh, counting uh, the, the, the tide. So Cello Voros has ripped into this field. She's broken away by two or three lengths. Fernandez leading at the start from the left-hand side of the pontoon has now lost touch with her completely. Maya Wallace still in fifth position there but she was also well away at the start and jenny withers fourth place fernandez second and in third place we'll get that to you at some stage i'm guessing amelie kessler may be from france so here's the course start line They've just gone round that top turn. They're coming back towards us now. Then when they get to us, it's round the turn over the portage and repeat that for the entire second lap. On the third lap, which is yellow, round the top turn and straight in to the finish. So Chelai, Voros, a class apart in this field and it's going to be a fair old race between her and Kisley in the final I think but now we have to add to that Tanya Alvarez who was also very strong in that first race but that's some gap opened up now Second group of five athletes. Sophia Chelai Voros putting on a bit of a display for us here today. Second group of five. So those six are guaranteed qualifiers if it stays like this. Then back to the Czech Republic and uh, Maya Wallace. In seventh and eighth. But actually with the numbers out here, it's going to be top eight qualified for sure for the final. And then four fastest losers. So we got France, Great Britain, Spain and Australia. But first into the portage and under no real stress at all.
uh, sorry to desert you on the commentary there, but we're sorting out our dinner arrangements. And we've been invited to the special dinner, both Jim and I. We pulled rank there, limited numbers only, but we made it. So Cello Voros, followed by Fernandez with us. Kessler from France, Piazza from Italy, Nielsen from Australia, Chova from Czech Republic, Wallace from Great Britain, Sousa from Portugal, and the two Swedes at the back for now. But you can see that that group is a big group and a close group. They've all closed in on each other. Hoy from Sweden, Surfski paddler up to this point. This is the first time we've seen her at a marathon event. So everything to play for here. Eight of these people will certainly make the final. And to me, it looks like the tail end of this race is faster than the tail end of the first heat. So I think we may see all of these feature in the final tomorrow. It's a 20 boat maximum for these races. Jelai Voros round the top turn. Chase Pack being led by Great Britain's Jenny Withers, who's possibly broken away from the other three, but maybe that's just the camera angle. Jelai Voros not going to be caught, that's for sure. She goes around the top turn. It's got to be some sort of joy being out there on those ICF boats doing judging on a turn on a day like this. One of the scratches from this heat was Aurora Figueras, one of the stronger of the Spanish marathon paddlers in recent history. A couple of their strong paddlers were scratched at the team leaders meeting. Although, frankly, the Spanish team leader looked a little bit confused by a lot of that team meeting. I'm not, I'm not sure if his paddlers have actually been told they have been scratched now, <laughs> even though they've turned up. <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat a multilingual meeting for a bit of confusion. Coming down for second and final portage with a gap of some 40 seconds, probably. Actually, maybe even closer to a minute. Jelai Voros has got a lot to live up to. It's so hard, obviously, to get into the senior team. More entries allowed at these World Cups than at a World Championships or a European Championships. So there's some fight for places for the Hungarians. To get in the Hungarian women's team, you have to be a world medalist. That's pretty much a given. And it's, uh, well, a Hungarian assessment race or selection event must be uh, quite something to behold. Relaxed, very, very nice technique. Strong boat lifts every time she pulls. But she's still putting quite a lot of effort in. Tidy stand up and hop out. Gets deep relatively quickly. Can't get out too far out. Nice little sort of jog through the portage. There's no pit lane on the short events, so there's no feeding. There's also no penalty box 
but if anyone does earn a penalty, that's added onto their time at the end of the race rather than stopping them as they would in the long events. Very tidy getting in. But of course, it's easy to be very tidy when you're under no load at all, and no stress at all. It was a very, very nice technique there. She didn't uh, put her hand on the, on the boat at all, just jumped in. So, Fernandez and Withers, followed by Kessler, Piazza. That's those four. France and Italy following Great Britain and Spain. Then a bigger gap back, some 20 seconds nearly to the Czech and Australian. And moving up well through the field is Anderson, who was uh, tail two at the back last time. She's gone past Wallace and Souza. So the main pack away well. That's Fernandez with us. Piazza and Kessler on the right of your shot. So all the way down to Anderson. They're safe. They're going to be in the final. 9, 10 and 11. Still have work to do. Group of four, Nielsen from Australia. Anderson on her own behind that. Something must have happened to Rachova there because she was sixth into the portage by the look of it. And she's certainly not sixth now. So maybe took a swim at the portage. And Portugal, Great Britain also been overtaken by Hoy from Sweden over that portage. So around the top turn for the last time goes Cello Voros. She'll be cruising into the finish in about two minutes. No one else in sight yet. No one around the top turn. You can see the moving water pushing her downstream. Hungary, chase pack now being led by France, Italy to the right, Great Britain tucked in the back, Spain just dropping off the back, and Australia just round the turn is Sweden, followed by Czech Republic, followed by Sweden again. So Cello Voros untroubled, 50 meters to go to the finish, and he too comes to a close. No problems at all. And now for the tail enders, it's a wait to see who qualifies. She hasn't slowed down after the finish line. She, she's on a mission, the girl. So France leading the chase group. That's Amelie Kessler. To her left, Gaia Piazza, and on the back, Jenny Withers. <coughs> so that's the first four.
next to cross the line, Fernandez. Six. Followed by Nielsen from Australia. Emma Anderson. And it's going to be Sweden again. Finishing seventh. She might be qualified. Rochova is eighth. I'm pretty sure seventh and eighth will qualify yeah. just based on numbers alone. Then from Sweden is Hannah Hoy. Hannah Hoy that is doing her first short track internationally, coming from the surf ski. Maya Wallace, her first international experience, finishes with Sousa from Portugal. Did really well off the start. Just got outgunned by the older, more experienced athletes over the course. But your international career has to start somewhere. And quite a few first timers here at this event. And a lot of the countries are using the World Cups for that, <coughs> Stefan. There's a couple of B teams, if you like. Here. Yes, absolutely. And it's a free entry to the World Cup, so each nation can participate uh, with as many athletes they want to. So it's a perfect uh, way to start the international career. Some great footwear there by the officials, Stefan. The, the yeah. plastic bag footwear. Plastic poncho and plastic bags on your feet. ICF official uniform, I believe. <laughs> I think it's ICF uniform, not Portuguese creativity. I think that's the uniform for, for all officials. Yep, the plastic bag looking good. These ICF officials that's, that is um, traveling around doing uh, doing this event on their own, uh, more or less more or less on their own costs. And now we will wait uh, five minutes or so for the next start.
Okay, on the line now. Top of your screen, Tom Sharp, Great Britain. Nearest to us, Barry Watkins. It does seem this left-hand side of the pontoon has a bit of an advantage on the start. But the big names in this one, I think Watkins, always very fast off the start. So as previously, it's definitely the left-hand side of the pontoon doing slightly better. In the middle of your shot is Spaniard, boat 68, which, oh no, sorry, that's uh, German, boat 68, Yanis Werner. That doesn't look right. Maybe I'll give a check on you later on that, but it's Watkins. Werner doing a great job there. Is Matt Johnson from Great Britain. I think there's no doubt that if you could choose which side of the pontoon you start, you would start on the left-hand side. Group coming together quite nicely. It's split. There's about six, seven in that front part. Tom Sharp has come to the left-hand side quite, quite wisely, I think, and he's making his way up separate from the group. So leader, Romalo now. Barry Watkins and Adam Petro, they're the three main players in this. Tom Sharp and Matt Johnson doing a great job. Tightly packed group again, it's uh, six to the final for sure, and then the eighth, eight fastest times outside of those top six. So around the turn goes Romalo. Petro on his inside, Watkins on his outside. Tucked in the back. Not sure, but it's Tom Sharp outside him. And the Spaniard just going around the turn, boy, now. We'll get proper name checks when we get the on-screen graphic over the portage. in touch with that first group it's a nice big group it's going to be very, quite hectic coming into the portage so there's Romalo Watkins Petro Sharp Johnson Petro to the right of Romalo there, one of my favorite racers, always races very intelligently. You very rarely see him make a mistake. And this is the first year we've seen him mixing it internationally in the seniors. He's been junior world champion, under 23 world champion. But as we've seen many times in the past, it's a big jump up to the senior ranks. But nice group of nine opposite us now there's two boats just off the back of that nine which includes the Czech and a Spaniard coming in to the first portage you're probably going to see a couple of errors getting out of the portage with this many boats it's going to be interesting Romalo won't be one of those making an error I don't suppose nor will Petro they're the two with experience the Romalo Petro and Watkins they seem safe for now Tom Sharp closest to us should also be safe he's got a nice position there Johnson coming round fast on the outside, making room for himself, doing a great job. 75 on the inside is Pablo Solares. 
Romano up and out and away. So, so easy when it's done well. And things can go wrong so, so quickly. Matt Johnson's done a superb exit from his portage. Being hassled, Italians lost his paddles there and that was his own fault. He tried to squeeze Johnson onto the railings. Johnson was having none of it, did a great job to hold his ground and the Italian had to go back for his paddle. So away go the top three with Johnson who is having a superb race here. Solares, the Spaniard, just off the back of that group. Tom Sharp, the next one out. He's with Werner from Germany. Bonacina, the paddle dropper, just behind him. Then Czech Pavlik, and with them is, uh, wow, Baru Tabiena. They can, they can come up with a name, the Spaniards, can't they? So, nine away still. Ten away, rather. It's ten in contention. Five in the front group. Johnson doing a superb job in that front group. First senior international experience for Johnson from Great Britain and he's with some really big names up the front of this race. Being stretched out now, though, by Watkins on that top turn. So it's Watkins, Romalo, and Petro. Johnson just about maintaining contact. He's keeping Solares in contact with that group as well. And we'll join you as soon as we can. Quick overview of the course, start 600 metres up to the top turn and back to the start. First portage, out and round, same again for the second lap in red, back round the portage, third lap in yellow, round the top turn and straight to the finish line. So on the water, those front three eking out just a small lead. All five are safe, I would say. So it's Watkins, Romalo, and Petro. Never seen Petro do a solid day's work in his life. Great racer. He's always there, and he always comes good at the finish of the long races. It's going to be really interesting to watch him tomorrow, or sun Sunday, in the long race. One of my favorite racers, without a doubt. Only a little small fella. He's tiny, isn't he? He's, he's, he's he is. stood next to some of his compatriots. Both he and Boros are, are really quite small guys. Yeah. Very endurant. Solares now. You can see a V wash up there, just two or three lengths away. A good portage. We'll see him get back in contact with these three. Still clinging on to Solares, it's Johnson. <laughs> no real stress at the front of this race. Six to go through. Solares just in sight there, bow of his boat, hoping to come out the portage back in contact with these three. Watkins first to stand. Romalo and Petro both coming in a lot closer to the 
beach before they jump out. Solares just a few lengths down with Johnson. No one running particularly hard over the portage. So Romalo first back into his boat. Watkins maintains his lead though. <laughs> Petro comfortably away. Straight onto the half V behind the other two. Nobody particularly keen to take it on. Solares and Johnson. They're on their own now, just behind. And then it's Sharp and Bonacina, about 10 lengths behind there. There they are now, there's Bonacina. Sharp just to his right. Could be tough between these two. Only Could one place yes. for sure goes to one of those guys. Somebody's going to lose out on automatic qualification but there's still the eight fastest losers to go through and I would think that one of those would get that. So Werner, Palen alongside um, Pavlik as they make their way up to the top turn for the final time. Top three untroubled. <coughs> so around the top turn goes Watkins, Romalo, happy to let him lead. Petro, always happy to let anyone lead. And they've uh, got until the finish. Yeah, until so. the finish. He's always very, very sharp. His positioning in the lead up to the finishes is what always impresses. Yeah. He always gets himself out of trouble at the right time. And a very good portrait here as well. Yeah. So Watkins leads this one. One scratch from this race was Jeremy Candy, with the French guy. And he's good on the short races normally. All the French are. And, uh, France has a very good team now with four four guys that uh, could be all of them could be all uh, world class. Uh, yeah, level. yeah. So Bonacina making a break from Tom Sharp in the far distance. There's only one place Bonacina's gone wide. Sharp's cut in to get back with Solares and with Johnson. So it's game on for those six places. It's seven, the first three are away. Then Solares looks safe. Johnson on his left. Tom Sharp seems to have made contact with them again. Oh, we're having our windows cleaned in here as well. <laughs> we, can, we can actually see out through the window now. Yeah, so we can, so we can commentate live and from screen at the same time. Bonacina is com coming now. So, so it's, it's really tight. It looks like Tom Sharp's the one who's suffering. He's going to be the seventh place as it stands. Johnson also struggling to hold on to Solares and it's going to get very, very tight for that sixth place. But here at the front, it's Watkins from Petro from Romalo. No stress at all. Solares is safe in fourth place. It's a big race in now. It's Solares in fourth. Bonacina fifth. Johnson, sixth. There's guaranteed qualification. Sharp in seventh. I think we can assume Sharp will be okay on time with eight fastest losers. It was quite a quick race, so that should be. Baruti Abiena. Next through. Then it's Janice Werner coming in ahead of Pavlik from the Czech Republic. Meanwhile, we get treated to a view of the local favourite, Romalo. <coughs> Stefan, Worlds is in Portugal this year. Romalo has been so close for so long. Yes, he has. And um, 
I think it's it it, it is his the, the goal of his uh, of his lifetime to win at his his home turf here this this September. You have to feel maybe he needs to change his race plan a little and his method. It's so hard to take on the South Africans now in the last 200 meters. Yeah, he's not. He hasn't historically had the turn of speed that gives him that advantage, and every time it happens, it happens the same way. And he has tried and tried and tried to 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 get free, um, so he won't suffer from that. But that's not easy either with the South Africans. So or, or with any of the world class. No, right. to, to drop somebody and yeah. to, to make that break. So Remember in the Europeans in Slovenia a couple of years ago when he when he did that. Uh, he did it, but you also remember the cost of that yes. when he was vomiting oh, yeah. in the officials' yeah. cabin <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I mean, it was really, really good. tired. But, but I think that's the race. that's the tactics he, he need to try to approach. And then uh, it will be interesting to see if uh, Pimenta is coming to the Worlds as well. He did uh, a very good uh, 5,000 meter previous he weekend. Paddled away from the field last yeah. weekend in Zeged, and he, he won the thousand as well. <coughs> um, I'm sure he'll be on. Uh, international duty in the sprints all year but it's not olympic qualification this year so maybe the stress isn't on maybe he will come and race in his home, yeah. home hometown so much going on in portugal this year we have this world cup and then uh, um, then the sprint uh, world championships and the marathon world championships coming up and uh, no i also think they will have the stand-up paddling world championships in portugal so yeah they do yeah, yeah. i think the same weekend four. as the surf ski four four big weekend yeah. four big events five actually so finished heat one and we will move on to heat two more big players in heat two it's five minutes to go. Adrian Boros on the track in the next one. He was second in the 5K last weekend in Zeged. We've got Christian Mate, who's always featured so highly in the first half of all the long races. It fades towards the end often, but he's got several medals to his name already. And uh, Quentin Urban, who was uh, third uh, last weekend in Zeged, is also in that heat. Quentin Urban from France, one of the very good guys from France. And on the far side will be Stefan Boulanger, one of the others. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, another good field. Maybe the first race, possibly slightly stronger on balance, but uh, have we got no, we've got three French. We've got Edwin Lucas in this as well. So, two Hungarians, <coughs> three French. A couple of Italians, Graziani is also one of the front runners in the early stages of all the long races in the recent history. And Christian Matti. This is a really tough one. Christian Matti, third in the under 23s at the Worlds last year. I think he thought he was going to win that. Struggles towards the end of some of these races, I think. He does a lot of work. He's somebody who's prepared to put in a lot of work early on. Thank you. 
start line for the final race of today. Closest to us, Balsamo from Italy. Up from him, Urban from France, Pardo from Spain, Lindbergh from Sweden, Boros, one of the big players from Hungary, Lucas from France, Rodriguez from Portugal, Troca from Germany, Fernandez from Spain, Christian Matte from Hungary, Graziani, Italy, Diegas from Spain, Svensson from Sweden, and Boulanger from France. And another Spaniard at the top of that, whose name is Palmas. Off they go. Top six, qualified by right. Boat 79, Quentin Urban, one of the favorites for these short races. And he's always, always doing uh, quick starts. Urban. But it's Palo from um, Pardo rather from Spain. Takes it for now. So Pardo from Urban. From Lucas. From Balsamo, closest to us in the black boat. Italian top, Lindbergh, and then after that, I'm guessing a little bit, so it's probably best if I shut up. So a quick view of the course from the start line, about 600 meters up to the top turn, round the top turn, straight back to turn two, into the portage for the first time, repeat that lap, top turn, bottom turn, Portage, that's lap two, final lap in yellow, top turn and straight to the finish. About three and a half K ish in total. So big group as it was in the first heat. At the back of that group in the green boat, Adrian Boros struggling for position. He'll be working his way up the washes to try and get back in contention. He had a good start draw as well. He's often uh, doing quite slow starts, Adrian Boris. Um, he told me last year he wasn't fond of start starts, but uh, he, he is not panicking for that. He now knows his skill. Last weekend he was uh, second and at 5,000 meters in Seged. So the, the problem with being back there, though, Stefan, you just saw it just out of shot. Yeah. The other guy, I think, the other guy he's with, just missed the, the yeah. last boy anyway. But he also messed up the previous boy and held Boris back yeah. there. So once you're back with the people who aren't quite sure of what they're doing, life gets a little bit dangerous in these races. That's why the good guys always like to be with the other good guys out the front. Things become predictable, and you know where you stand. So leading, as he was from the start, is Victor Pardo. Quentin Urban in the red boat. And... They are moving fast now. I think it's Edwin Lucas, this side in the white boat, tucked in the back. Lindbergh. We've got the Italian and Lindbergh coming up the outside with a bit of intent there. So that's the top five, and then there's a big group of five or six behind them. So they're pressing on here. Absolutely. So Victor Pardo, clearly keen push this along a little bit. Tidily round the first boy of that turn. Second group now led by Adrian Boros in the green boat. He's going to portage well. There goes Urban into the lead. So the two Frenchmen took on Pardo and lead into 
Portage number one, Lindbergh safe. And it's the Italian, Balsamo, who looks like he's going to be caught. And there's a big group behind him. He could easily lose his place in the top six. So those first four are away and clear. Boros just out of his boat now. <coughs> Always very tidy. A couple of people slow. There's a few Spaniard coming wide. So these are the top four, two from Spain, one from Sweden, two from France rather, one from Spain, one from Sweden, and Balsamo, if he gets in well, can be back in contact. He's away, just struggling to get his boat moving. Boros is away well, and he's gonna close the gap with second Swede. Emil Svensson, Christian Mate in the red and black boat there, also struggling. So it hasn't been a great race for two of the big names in this one. So we've got four in the front, followed by three, that's seven. Only six of those qualified by right. Christian Mate making his way back to those three. You have to favour his chances if it comes to a sprint at the end. Watch Boris now, moving out far out to the left. Far out to the left, I think it's a good idea. There's a massive back eddy it is. in this bay here. And I think that's a great idea. But it's obviously not a direct route to that boy, but I think a good idea Italian doesn't think it's a good idea. He's made a break for the main pack again. But Boros and Svensson. He lost, he lost a couple of both lengths on that move. Boris. But safe, safe in the top six now for Boros. It's hard to see him losing touch now. So Urban leads, Torstensen, no Lindbergh, sorry, I'm losing it. Struggling to get around that turn was Lucas. While these guys make their way back to the second portage, we've got the times for the women's short race. There's a short list of three, which is Ocean, Brindo, Sophia Gixi, and Marie Mix. They're the three who didn't make the cut for the final. So if your name's not on that list, you can come in. And there's 20 votes in the final. Only three got knocked out from, that women's, from those women's heats. A few more will go from the men's. It looks to me these three are clearly going to be in that final, as are the three behind them, which is Sweden, Hungary, and Spain. These are the leaders. Urban, Lucas, and Lindbergh. So through comes Urban. Lindbergh very comfortable with him and Lucas also untroubled. Up and out. Lindbergh the tidiest of those three. 
no real hurry for any of them. Inbrood looks good, Stefan. What's his history in these short races? Uh, he is a good sprinter as well, and um, uh, he has several medals in short track racing back in Sweden. We have done that for a decade or more uh, back there, and it used to be a specialty. So we're making a good job of this one. Boros away well. Svensson with him. Pardo, the early leader. Boros again is going left of the group. This time, I think it is going to work for him. Lucas is the one who's moved out to the right, struggling to get back on terms with Lindbergh. And it's going to be Pardo in no man's land in the middle there. He's sweating this one out. his way back to those other two is Svensson leading from Boros in group two and Pardo is just about hanging on there first three already around the turn there seems to be problems on the final boy of this turn as they move out into the main flow in the river the flow pushes them onto these boys here and there you see Lucas just hit that one again Flo is pushing them down onto the boys. And that's how he lost those front two. All tidily round the final boy. These three are coming in. They're some 20 seconds ahead of Svensson and Boros. They've broken away from Pardo our early leader and Pardo is going to have to sweat it out because he looks tired in the background there. There he is on top of his shot and he's being chased down by the third Frenchman. Could be Boulanger. Really impressed by Lindbergh. No rush for either of these two now though at this stage. So six through to the final, plus the eight best times after that. So Lindbergh from Urban from Lucas. That's one, two, three in shot there. Urban, one of the big finishers in this field, obviously didn't show it there, but he has a turn of speed that can do damage over that last 100 metres. There's Boros and Svensson, and it is going to be Boulanger next. Well, Pardo, who led the early stages, is going to have to wait and see, and he finished also with Christian Mate. Hungary, I would imagine all three of those will qualify. Great work from the Swedes on that one. You'll be pleased with that, Stefan. Absolutely. They have done uh, quite a good job over the winter and also did well in the, the, the Vaterland Marathon previously this year. And then we have had some domestic races where they have also uh, shown good shape. Jukke Lindberg, that is also a good cross-country skier. He finished uh, in top uh, 50 or so on the Vasalop at uh, 90 kilometers, 10,000 um, skiers. So that's the limit of our racing for today. A little warm up for you, the spectators, us, the commentators, and indeed the paddlers. 
as soon as we get results, we will tell you. I don't think they're going to be out quick enough for this broadcast. Certainly in the women's, we know that three missed out. That was Ocean Brindo from Spain, Sophia Gixi from Hungary, and Marie Mix from Germany. They're the only three women who won't make the final. The men, we're still waiting. As those times come up, you can look up the results yourself on canoemarathonportugal.com. All one word, Canoe Marathon Portugal. Spelt exactly how you'd assume it would be. So sixth place, sixth place, or let's go seventh place in the first heat was Tom Sharp with a time of 13.56. As the times come up for the second race, we'll try and keep you informed. <coughs> so, anything under 14 minutes, there's Christian Mate. He's gonna be one of the big players, I'm sure, later on in the weekend. A Little bit of a... Uh, nondescript first first heat for him you'd expect more so weather's clearing up here and so hopefully by tomorrow it will be much better Trocker we were seeing there in shot from Germany. Didn't see where he finished, but uh, we'll update as soon as we can. So, some big names making heavy work of some of their racing this morning, this afternoon rather. And certainly for me, but it sounds not for Stefan, some surprises. Swedes were pretty impressive in that race. 